exercising one of the copyright owner's exclusive rights, which is also called doing an act comprised in the copyright, is a direct infringement if it is done without the copyright owner's permission or without a legal excuse. Intention is not relevant to copyright infringement. A person can infringe copyright even if they have no knowledge that what they are doing violates copyright law. The most common form of direct infringement is reproduction in a material form. There are two elements to reproduction, objective similarity and causal connection. For objective similarity, the court will compare the defendant's work with the plaintiff's work to determine whether they are similar. The defendant must have produced a work that closely resembles the plaintiff's work. The objective similarity must be between the expression in the two works, not the underlying ideas. It can sometimes be difficult to tell whether what has been copied is expression or ideas. For example, in Zakola and Universal City Studios, the issue was whether the film Great White, about a man-eating shark, infringed copyright in the novel and screenplay of Jaws. The court held that while there can be no copyright in the idea of a man-eating shark, in this case there was objective similarity between situations, characters and locations in the two films. The judge considered the overall impression given by the two films rather than excluding from consideration certain, quote, stock scenes. The court found that the film Great White infringed copyright in the literary and dramatic works of Jaws. By contrast, in Telstra Corp and Royal and Sun Alliance, a car insurance company ran a parody advertisement which appropriated certain elements of Telstra's Gogomobile advertisements. They used the main character of Mr. Gogomobile, the Gogomobile itself, and the device of a humorous story told over a telephone when Mr. Gogomobile seeks help in relation to his vehicle. The court held that the elements copied related to ideas and concepts rather than expression. Justice Merkel stated, Plainly the advertisement conjures up the first Gogomobile advertisement and its ideas and concepts, but does not reproduce substantial parts of the substance or expression of the dramatic events comprising that advertisement. So you can see that it can be very tricky to tell whether what has been copied is expression or ideas, and reasonable minds may disagree. The second element involved in reproduction is that there must be a causal link between the defendant's work and the plaintiff's work. It is important to establish this causal connection because of the rule that independent creation does not infringe copyright. So, for example, it is possible for two people in two different places to come up with virtually the same tune even though they have never been exposed to each other's music. This is independent creation and it is not an infringement because it does not involve any copying. A causal connection can be made out by showing that the defendant had access to the plaintiff's work. However, where there is a high degree of similarity between the two works, then a presumption may arise that the defendant copied the plaintiff's work, even if the plaintiff cannot show that the defendant had access to the work. This is generally expressed as the similarities being so striking that it is highly unlikely that the defendant created his or her work independently. The defendant can rebut this presumption by showing that they were never exposed to the plaintiff's work, though this can be difficult to prove. Copyright infringement can be subconscious, meaning that a person can be liable for copying even if they were not aware that that's what they were doing. One of the most famous cases of subconscious copying involved George Harrison from The Beatles. He was found to have copied the chiffon song He's So Fine, which was recorded in 1962, in his song My Sweet Lord, which was released in 1970. There were strong similarities between the songs. The court found that even though Harrison had not deliberately copied He's So Fine, he had done so subconsciously.
Harrison had admitted to hearing He's So Fine when it was released, and that exposure, together with the similarities, were enough for the court to be satisfied of copying, even though Harrison claimed that he had forgotten He's So Fine by the time he wrote his song. So those are the two elements of copying, objective similarity and causal connection. There are also some specific things you need to know for infringement by reproduction relating to particular types of works and particular provisions of the Copyright Act. Section 21 sub 5 of the Act makes clear that computer programs are reproduced if an object code version of the program is derived from a source code version and vice versa. Section 21 sub 1 provides that a literary, dramatic or musical work is deemed to have been reproduced if a sound recording or film is made of the work. When assessing reproduction of musical works, courts will consider the objective similarity orally. It is the impression on the ear that matters, not a strict note-for-note -note comparison, though sometimes the courts will compare both the oral and visual impressions of the notated songs. For artistic works, the test for objective similarity is purely visual. Judges will trust their eyes. It is important to distinguish, however, between copying someone's style or technique, which is not protected, and copying someone's form and expression, which is protected. This is similar to the idea-expression distinction. Section 21 sub 3 of the Act provides that copyright in an artistic work in two-dimensional form will be infringed by reproduction in three-dimensional form and vice versa. However, Section 66 provides that copyright in a building or model of a building is not infringed by the making of a painting, drawing, engraving or photograph of the building or model or by including them in a film or TV broadcast. Regarding simple designs, such as basic house plans, the court in Dixon Investments and Hall held that the more simple and commonplace the design is, the more closely the defendant's plan must follow the plaintiff's before copying is found. This is similar to the holding in the ICE TV case in relation to databases as a form of literary work. The court there held that the less original a work is, the more the defendant will need to take before copying is found. Finally, be aware that copying may be indirect. For example, in Frank M. Winstone and Plix Products, a New Zealand case, the respondents created drawings of a kiwi fruit tray. The New Zealand Kiwi Fruit Authority made the tray a standard for the industry and created written specifications based on the tray. The authority verbally described the specifications to the appellant and the appellant engaged a designer to produce drawings based on the verbal description. The appellant then produced a kiwi fruit tray based on its designer's drawings. The court held that the appellant's tray was a reproduction of the respondent's tray. There is one last element that you need to show to establish infringement by reproduction, and that is copying of a substantial part. Substantial part is considered in a separate video.